Hey folks, welcome to my program. And what we have here is a Well McLean uh, Model LGB Series 2 boiler with uh, seven sections. And I wanted to go over with you a couple of the features of the LGB. And uh, I'm going to sort of a critique overall of this uh, install, uh, which I uh, didn't do when I've worked on this thing, so I just wanted to make some comments on it. Um, overall, I would say that the install is not too bad. Uh, there's your outlet, and they've got the correct number of swing joints, and um, the manuals of the uh, Well McLean call for stress relief fittings here and that as far as it goes but uh, the installer um, in this particular case uh, used a uh, hardening pipe dope which um, doesn't allow for proper proper uh, torque relief uh, the idea is that uh, when the header is cold and the boiler fires, the boiler begins to heat and expand and uh, that will put stress as the boiler expands here and then on the fittings uh, and the, uh, the gaskets and so forth. These are, they use a rubber gaskets on uh, the LGB, Well McLean's in general. And then when the steam arrives, this header then heats, steel expands more than the cast iron and then it puts an opposite stress and the heating and cooling cycles will flex the uh, boiler a lot and uh, may cause premature um, failure of the seals um, and i know that these things don't really move very well because uh, uh, i replaced that uh, cap and nipple because uh, that was uh, leaking and it took a heck of a lot of uh, nonsense to get that out. Let me show you the nipple I replaced here. So that rusted out on the day's work. Um, so I would advise if you ever put one of these together that you use uh, non-hardening pipe dope. Maybe uh, I, I usually, usually back it up with Teflon. All right, so moving on. Um, one of the advantages of the LGB series, particularly in section, six section and above, is that it allows for low, high, low fire. So they've installed a, the, a low fire controller in here, and they have two operating controls, which are um, in series. So they're kind of got some duplication I'm not sure why they did that. And then, of course, they've got the uh, high limit reset. So I dropped the high limit reset to five pounds. Uh, in general, these things uh, tend to trip off at a much higher rate than the settings. Uh, this thing does run up to five pounds uh, when, uh, when it's all, uh, well, only one zone is, is calling your three zones on this thing. And I made sure in this particular case that the uh, firing rate control was actually uh, allowing the unit to shift from high fire to low fire at a pound and a half. Even though the settings were set at the proper settings, uh, these PA404As have a tendency to be um, precise but not accurate. So I made sure that that worked. And it, I think that's going to help get this... Uh, system through the season without any leaks um, that's part of the issue here is that lgb boilers um, have a propensity to leak way beyond what they should um, this boiler is only uh, seven years old and two years ago they had, uh, the contractor replaced two of the sections and then over the summer uh, prior to my arrival, uh, they replaced two more, so over half this boiler has new sections in it. And um, just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Um, so the moniker on these things, the sort of um, uh, G 
jokey name of this uh, LGB is a uh, leaking gas boiler. Uh, fortunately, they have that reputation, and it's probably deserved. Sad to say, uh, they are available, and they do assem assemble uh, relatively easily on site. But um, and they say they have that propensity to leak way beyond what they should. And what was happening, I think, in this particular case was that the uh, leaking sections over time um, impinged on the reliability of the ignition sequence. So we've got right there, for example, that's a new bracket, where my finger is, that's a new bracket that I installed just today. Uh, I use brass screws. There's another bracket there. That's the flame sense rod. And I use brass screws and anti-seize to put that on there. You can see if you can catch a glimpse of the flame sense rod. And this is where the pilot assembly sense and spark are. And so on a call for heat, um, when this gets energized with 24 volts, uh, it'll send a high voltage spark and uh, will open up the pilot gas valve and the sense comes back and it needs to sense, uh, I'm gonna say about two um, uh, microamps of direct current, uh, 10 to one times uh, 10 to the minus six mi amperes. And if it doesn't sense uh, that current through the flame, uh, this will lock out and trip the CSD1 control there. Uh, if it does sense the flame, then it'll uh, cause the main valves to open and um, the flame will propagate across the top of the tube and it, when it reaches uh, this flame sense rod there within less than a second, uh, that should then keep this thing happy uh, to uh, make sure that uh, uh, the flame is actually there. If this uh, doesn't sense that microamp circuit, it'll also trip out the lockout. So this thing is getting locked out. Um, these are the brackets that I replaced. You can see they're pretty rusty um, due to the leaks. And uh, that's your classic LGB fail failure point. Uh, that doesn't, uh, that's not going to make a good uh, connection to ground. And uh, the intermittent ground will, will cause problems. Then I got their skim tapping here. Uh, it's not too bad. I'm not sure why they made this so long. I guess maybe they only had a 12 inch nipple and so that's what they used. The other disadvantage of the um, LGB is that they, uh, I think we've discussed it on other videos, is that they are built to use the float controls, which I believe are a weakness. I generally like the electronic controls. They're lo low maintenance. You have to blow these down some, at least once a week, sometimes uh, several times a week, sometimes once a day, depending on usage. And this is the uh, secondary or emergency low water cutoff. And when you blow it down, you, of course, uh, this particular one, you need to push that reset button. And this is your 150 float control, which is also uh, used as a, uh, the primary low water cutoff and um, pump control. So when the float drops, to a certain level, one of the switches there then will trigger the boiler feed valve to uh, add water and then the float rise up and shut the uh, unit off, or shut the feed off rather. Uh, I worked, last worked on this tank uh, about 2009. Uh, we added the water meter and the, um, the back flow preventer and the uh, um, FB38 uh, low, low uh, pressure reducer valve because these particular float controls in there, uh, if you tr add more than 30 pounds, they'll just lift off and uh, flood the uh, tank and you know, water all over the floor. Uh, with these pumps, you generally want to use a flow control. I think I added this uh, so that this thing does not slam uh, water into the uh, um, boiler too quickly uh, and uh, cause water hammer and, and, and so forth. We got a check valve there. I don't think I added that. Um, 
The only work I really did uh, besides this nipple, as we discussed earlier, is this had an isolation uh, union. So um, I took all of that out because uh, the union was leaking pretty badly and uh, uh, just made, made it uh, non-ferrous all the way in. Yeah, all right, so. Um, I got a 30 pound gauge here. Uh, excuse me, 60 pound. They, you know, they probably maybe get a 30 pound would be a little bit better, a little bit more accurate, but this is accurate enough. Um, as I said, this goes up to a pound and a half before it drops to low fire, and then it'll slowly rise up to about four, four or five pounds. I've dropped the firing rate a little bit to, to extend that cycle. But one of the interesting things that the uh, in, um, original installer added was this, um, that this would normally be plugged, this cross T here, and they removed the plug and installed a uh, probe. And this probe is then going to a high water limit, which is rather interesting. It's not a bad idea, actually. Um, these 150s can stick and allow the pump to flood the system. It'll just keep running. Uh, water will fill up all the way up to the top tippy top and squirt fine leaks and squirt out all over the place. So with the probe set there, uh, if the water reaches that, I believe that this thing is wired up so it will turn probably the burner off. That's what I would do. And also you want to turn off the uh, want to kill the voltage to that pump there so I think that's what that does well nope. that's what I would do it anyway so I and mean, then that might be a good idea something to think about if you're you are required to put one of these guys in uh, so oh that's right and they also they do they did add a sight glass blowdown valve on there I'm like well I believe that's required by CSD1 codes uh, so that's good and I think that is about it for this guy. I want to thank you very much. I hope this was a uh, good video for you and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.